Happy you're here. Good morning. Welcome. Another beautiful morning. There are little boats out here with a couple of people in each of them in the quiet of the morning. Just a little left of the light on the water there. That's a boat. It's just looking at the end of it now. So when it swings around a little, you can see two people there. And there's another one over here. Where are we here? Come on. Oh, there's the jet ski. So the jet ski just passed the other one. I'm sure it got a bit rougher there. Or maybe that's a jet ski too, so it doesn't matter. And then there's another one over here. That's the first one we saw. And there's another one over beyond it. No, sorry. This is the first one we saw here in the right in the bottom corner. And there's the other one. And then we have another jet ski coming out over here. Somebody told me the other day I'm crazy about jet skis. Yeah, I'm kind of impressed. I, you know, I never even rode one of those things. I'm not overly attracted. Uh, there's a lot of speed, noise, especially the noise doesn't attract me. And I don't need that bouncing around. I think it must be great for teenagers. <laughs> great for young people with lots of fizz. But when you're in your seventh decade, you don't need that. At least I don't. <laughs> Maybe some people do. <laughs> there was a, a, a former president of the United States, I think, some years ago, uh, jumped from an airplane with a parachute. And uh, <laughs> kind of impressive story, you know. I, I guess people love to do those things. I don't need to do that. But today we're up on a new path here which we haven't walked before, at least together. And I discovered this, uh, or rediscovered it, I think I was on it a long time ago, uh, a few days ago when I was up here, after we finished. And so our path normally goes uh, just on the other side of those bushes down there. So we have a little more height. It's a little rockier, stonier. And uh, so I just have to watch where I'm walking. And we're here closer to this cliff. So we're getting closer eventually. <laughs> Let's see how far over we get. We're walking towards Tiberius in that direction. We're a nice way down from Magdala. Here you can see the, the boats over there in the little jetty right in front of where I sleep. There, right there at the water. Let's go up here, there, you see them there? So that's where I get to swim every evening in the summertime. In the wintertime, it's usually every morning, although with the live streams, it has changed my pattern a lot. So the evening works out well. So we have readings today, interesting readings, uh, very interesting readings. A lot of things are banging around in my head for the last few days because of conversations with young people. And actually for longer than that, for over a year with another young person and different countries. And well, let's go to the readings first. So. Basically, we're starting Deuteronomy today. Here, this gets a little rougher. Oh, by the way, when I came up to this path this morning, there was a, a mama boar. <laughs> Can you say a mama boar? <laughs> a mama wild, 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 wild swine, Wildschwein in German, uh, and her four little ones. And she grunted threateningly, 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 threateningly at me but she was far enough away for me to be a danger for her. So I just stood my ground and she went off with her four little ones. This is a little wilder terrain here. You see, we're very close now to these cliffs up here and these caves. Someday, maybe we'll get up that far. So Deuteronomy is kind of it's a very interesting book. It's the fifth book of the five books of 
Moses, as they are called and known. And you see our path down there where we were walking before? It goes alongside those trees. They are just on this side of those trees, that path, and now we're up here. So it enhances the perspective to be up a little higher. In Deuteronomy or Moses' instructions to the people going in, that's the way it's all, all packaged. And they're finished, basically, they're wandering in the desert and it's setting up instructions for how to live in the Promised Land. And they've been freed from slavery. So, It's interesting because if we go to the other end of the readings today, to the Gospel, it's actually, interestingly, right after the Transfiguration, which we celebrated yesterday. But that's a fixed date on the 6th of August, which could be on any day of the week. And the readings for Saturday of the 18th week in which we're in is actually right after the Transfiguration. And there's a very interesting story as Jesus comes down from the mountain with the disciples. He encounters a man who comes to him and says, help my son. He is possessed. And your disciples were not able to get rid of the demons. And you could think of a, a father, just like we had the mother the other day, the Syrophoenician woman up in present-day Lebanon. And she um, was beseeching Jesus for her daughter. And here we have now this man beseeching Jesus for his boy. Just let me make one comment about this here. When I came by here, this is where I came by the other day and I saw this pathway here, and there were two or three little, uh, what do you call them, hyrex. And they were, <laughs> they scampered up in the rocks. One actually scampered out of this uh, buckthorn bush here and was running up the rocks. And then they were in those little holes up there, peeping out, and their head was almost as big. And they were peeping out there. It was just very interesting to watch them. They were viewing this strange passerby here. I'm sure they didn't have too many visitors for a long time. There we can see the caves up on the cliffs there. We haven't been this close before. It's an interesting rock formation. You can tell with the heat and the, and the cold with those changes of temperature, how this all cracks and is brittle and little by little it's chipping off and falling down and providing all the stones we have here that are covering this route. I have a feeling we came in here a number of years ago in a van to have mass on a cliff there overlooking Magdala with a bunch of pilgrims. Yeah, look at the, the trail sign is here. So, going back to our theme, we have the freedom from slavery, and that's what God does. He gives us, uh, the, the company with God leads us out of slavery and out of addictions and out of, out of uh, impoverishment of our person, because God wants us to live. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. The glory of God is the human being fully alive. And everything God does in our lives is directed in that way. 
when somebody is addicted and tied down, chained down, teledirected by demons, by imprisonments, enslavements. That's not God's plan for us human beings. And Deuteronomy in that sense today is absolutely beautiful. You know, it's that famous reading to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our strength. And you know, we are called, human beings are called. That's why we have names. Hey Mike, hey Nancy, come here. How are you doing? And we address each other as persons. We don't treat each other as things. We are called and we respond. I remember the moral treatise we studied in Rome for moral theology was called Chiamata e Risposta, call, the call and the answer. We are called. We are called to great love. And great love is the greatest expression of freedom. The love that leads us to make any sacrifice to do and seek the good of the other. To lift them up, to bring them to greater freedom. That they can stand on their own feet, that they can develop thought, analysis, good judgment, and not become a slave of fashion and addictions and patterns that are not conducive to complete human development. And that's why this father is crying out Jesus, help my son. Help us. Get him out. Get this evil out of him. How many parents have that prayer in their heart today? How many grandparents have that prayer in their heart today? I know grandparents whose son died very tragically. And the mother, unfortunately, had been very dysfunctional also because of addictions. And then suddenly these grandparents were left to be, to parent their grandchildren again. And all the issues in our modern societies of custody and all the challenges of living in dysfunctional situations. with that love that looks out for the good of that child. And in a way, that's also spiritual leadership. And we see the prime case of the words in Moses' mouth today about loving God and not forgetting the great things that he did, the wonders he worked. When you go into the land of milk and honey, when you become prosperous, not to forget your parents and your teachers who helped you to get there not to forget your neighbors, not to forget your co-workers who helped to build up your, your business, not to forget all who did good for you, and not to forget God who brought you out of slavery. Not to forget. What a great need we have today to remember. To remember the great deeds that brought us to this point. The great blessings. Yesterday I had a lovely chat with an old friend who was in his late 80s. His son is getting married today. His name is Mark and we pray for, for this couple and their son. And they had this child uh, very advanced in life. And so it's a, it's a great joy for them. But he was talking about his friend who was younger who had died, whom I knew very well a wonderful priest and this priest was a great support and, and, and guide for him and he was older than the priest he was an extraordinary man actually this man I happen to know him a little bit 
And he was sharing that. He said he cried for 40 minutes after hearing the news of the priest's passing. It touched me deeply. And the spiritual leadership is very important in our world because actually that's the most important part of parental responsibility for children. Hey, there's a little bird on the wire here. Crying out. That's a pigeon, is it? Yeah, it was a dove. She flew away, didn't want to be on camera. So, to be able to help others to love God with all their heart and all their soul and all their strength, to help them to find that path, that way, that is a big, a big challenge in our time. And to help people become free of evil influences. There I think we're looking again at this dad with his son crying out to Jesus for help. And it's interesting in today's gospel the passage says that Jesus says, the, the disciples say, why couldn't we kick him out? Why couldn't we get rid of the evil? And Jesus said it needs need faith. But in the other parallel gospel passage it says, only by prayer and sacrifice. But prayer and sacrifice are actually an expression of, of faith. Hey, look where we are. We're right here at the face of this rock. Really right close. It goes straight up here. And if we look down here on the other side, that's where we get to. That's the waterworks right here. Uh, where we get to walking when we do the, the path alongside the lake. So we got a bit more distance by being up here for sure because of the meandering. And here we have this fence. Look at the difference it makes for Abu Fir's cows to be grazing. Look at all the growth here. And here it's all grazed. And that's why these cows are allowed on this mountain because it's a threat. I'm not sure what they're going to do about this because this could burn in a second. And then we have the beehives down here. See all the beehives? And then there are beautiful carob trees and other trees down here and underneath they have beautiful seats, arrangements of stone seats for a nice relaxed conversation in the shade overlooking the Sea of Galilee here at the foot of the cliffs of Mount Arbel. People, let's wrap up. Uh, just by considering how we have a great calling to love. Our life is not about prohibitions and negatives. It's primarily, obviously they're important. We need railings, we need uh, to respect electricity, we need to respect traffic. We have all the different instructions for how to live and some of them are don't do this and don't do that. But basically our deepest calling is a call to love. And the call and love is, is possible for those who are free. And we never leave, lose that freedom even if we're in jail because we can always make the next step. There's always the next step today to start again because we're free to do that even in jail, even in a concentration camp, even in prison, even under harassment. In our hearts, we are free to forgive, we're free to help. We are free to pray for people no matter what is done to us, no matter what hurt is caused us. So may you be filled with love today, and especially for those who look up to you, if you're a parent, a grandparent, and to help the, all the others to grow in love, to be free from evil. And by prayer and sacrifice, Jesus said, we can do this by faith. People, let's say goodbye for now. God bless you and your families. And here we are. Look at this here, the mountain right here. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Beautiful weekend. See you later, alligators.